Hello, I'm Charles Moffat, and this is Moby Deck by Herman Melville. Now, you might think, hey, wait, doesn't Charles usually read fantasy books? And this is true, I do read a lot of fantasy books. But I also sometimes like to read the classics. And Moby Dick is one of those classic books, which I, in this case, it's, it's kind of like I, I made an exception, uh, because... No, I am making an exception. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, I really like the plot of Moby Dick. I also like the plot from Jaws, the movie. Um, so this, and if you're familiar with some of my books, there's a particular book which basically follows the plot from Jaws. Uh, but as far as that goes, why should you read Moby Dick? Mo bleh, Moby Dick. Well, it is a really long book, which is not a reason by itself to read it, but it is also believe it or not, a comedy. And you wouldn't think, looking at Moby Dick and thinking like, oh, it's a you know, bunch of guys hunting a whale. No, no, it's a comedy. Uh, it's got irony. It's got like all these different social situations where people are doing things. Uh, and it's just hilarious. There is uh, so much stuff in this. Like, I have seen various versions, like movie versions of Moby Dick. And... None of them really get into the whole fact that this is technically a comedy, okay? Um, they cut a lot of the comedic stuff out of the movies because it they need to be more synced, which unfortunately means that they're cutting out a lot of the funny stuff that happens during the course of the book. And I do recommend that people... Uh, that if, if you really like the, the, the movie versions, go read the book. Because it is so much better than what you see in the movies. And yes, okay, it still starts with Call Me Ishmael and all this other stuff. This is just uh, this wonderfully, wonderfully told story. Uh, which is, it will surprise you in terms of how funny it is. And there's a lot of chapters. A lot of these chapters are actually quite short. Like you could read... Like, some of these chapters might be only, like, one or two pages long, like this one. It's like, okay, chapter 52. One page and a bit. And then there's chapter 53 already. It's just very short chapters. Uh, so they're just ridiculously short at times. And some of them will be a bit longer. But you basically sit down and you can read, like, a chapter here, a chapter there. And the next thing you know, you're done in the book. Uh, and And it's a big book. And it's... Because it has so many chapters, you 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 kind of like it sneaks up on you and like okay, you finish a chapter, you finish another chapter. You could read like ten chapters in one sitting and be like, oh okay, I'm already up to chapter twenty one already. And I was just like, yeah, it it goes by very quickly. And feeling that you can always get like the audiobook version, which is available on like YouTube, um, so you could just listen to it for free. Or there's you know various apps that you can also get that. Uh, you can download audiobooks for you of them. Uh, so, yeah. I really enjoy this. Now, why do I also like sometimes reading uh, the uh, the classics? Well, the classics often have what I would describe as um, nutshell uh, stories. Okay? And I'll give you an example of a nutshell story. Romeo and Juliet. Okay? New Romeo and Juliet is a nutshell story because it's a tale of uh, two lovers who start off as enemies and then they, then, then they become lovers. That's essentially where it comes from. So, like, it's these two families that hate each other and then uh, boy and girl meet and then they become lovers. And uh, it doesn't end well as far as that goes. Uh, but, yeah, if you're familiar with the story, it definitely does not end well. But that's just the, you know, the way it is. It's a Shakespearean tragedy. It's not supposed to end well. Uh, and then there's King Lear, which is another tragedy. Uh, which is another one I would say definitely read if you want to read the classics. Oh, look. Julius Caesar. Another guy gets killed. <laughs> Hamlet. Always a fun one in my opinion. Anytime you get to like hold a skull in the story, uh, it's, that's, that's a fun one. Uh, what's another... Uh, classic that you should probably read. Dracula. Honestly, this is it's just so well written and just one of those great books that, you know, just it's all written from like first person like 
uh, like journals and letters, diaries. So when you read it, it's like, okay, this is Mina Harker's journal. This is uh, Dr. Seward's The Diary. So everything's from first perspective, from the different characters and so forth, letters and things like that. And, but telling their own perspective, and it still ends up being a fabulously wonderful story. Um, you, honestly, you can't go wrong. If you're into, like, dark fantasy or horror, Dracula is a good one to be reading. If you're into comedy, <laughs> Moby Dick. <laughs> Moby Dick is something you should be reading. Uh, yeah, it's just one of those fantastically well-written stories. But yes, okay, it's a story about like uh, somebody trying to get like revenge against a giant whale, but it's it's funny <laughs> at the same time, um, and it's it's because it's like these nutshell stories of like here's a guy who wants revenge, here's a bunch of people who want to uh, kill this guy because he's getting too powerful, uh, here's an evil vampire who. Uh, uh, he's, he's, you know, like lusting after his, uh, old love and he, you know, you know, wants to kill everybody who gets in his way and, and things like that. Uh, let's see. Here's an old guy who goes insane, uh, and, you know, he divides up his kingdom amongst his, like, three children or two children. Uh, and then everything just goes horribly wrong because of poor decision making. The star-crossed lovers who probably should not have been dating in the first place. But, you know, whatever. Um, open to interpretation. But these days, the, the whole idea of, like, enemies to lovers is very popular in romance fiction. So this is, like, the original enemies to lovers story right there. Except it's not. It's actually based on an earlier Greek story, which may or not be based on a different story that, you know, came from, you know, earlier than that. But, Whatever. Enemies to Lover has a very popular theme in, in literature, especially romance. Anyway, yeah, read the classics. Read the classics. It doesn't have to be fantasy. And the beauty of, I would say, fantasy books is that you can always turn something very easily into a fantasy book. You could turn Moby Dick into a fantasy book very easily in terms of you take the plot and you say, okay, I'm replacing this with a dragon or a griffin. Or a giant sea monster. Oh, wait, it already is a giant sea monster. It's it's a giant albino whale that's like, they don't really describe what species it is. Um, but, yeah. It's a giant whale that has like, you know, it's almost like it's undead, honestly. It could be a giant undead whale is the, uh, how you change it. <laughs> um, it would not require much tweaking to turn it into a fantasy book. Same thing with Romeo and Juliet. You just add, you know, oh, wait, it already has swords. So add dragons. I'd... <laughs> uh, King Lear is a story about, let's see. Uh, honestly, I think this one's already a fantasy. <laughs> Same with like Macbeth. It has witches in it. It's already a fantasy. Uh, Hamlet, you could very easily turn that into a fantasy. Uh, Julius Caesar, same thing, and Dracula. It's already a dark fantasy, so you're good, you know? Uh, read the classics. From a writer's perspective, you should read the classics just so that you you know what else other people have been doing and you can kind of like draw inspiration from them in terms of standing on their shoulders. Uh, but also, if you're a reader, you're going to enjoy reading these books. There's a reason why these are classics, and it's because they're awesome. And you really should be reading some of them. Okay? So, yes. Uh, this is my... Uh, it's not really so much a review as it is a... Um, what's the word I want to say here? Uh, a recommendation. Yes. This is a recommendation that people read the classics. And... You might not think that you're going to enjoy Julius Caesar or Hamlet or Moby Dick, but I'll bet you, I'll bet you that you will enjoy it. Moby Dick especially because it's a, a comedy, but you could turn, you know, a number of books into comedies if you just, you know, have the right frame of thought. You could turn Dracula into a comedy if you just like go about it the right way. Uh, it really depends on how well the writer executes it. That's the important thing. Uh, you could tell the same story again and again and again. 
Like Jaws is basically just a different version of Moby Dick. But if it's told well, then it will be well received. If you tell it poorly, like it's really just a horribly bad told story, not a lot of people are going to like it. So that's the important thing. How good the author is at actually expressing uh, the greatness of the story. of it, How well of good of a job they do. And I think that's all I have to say. Yeah, read the classics. And for me, uh, on a professional level, I consider this to be work. So me reading the classics is basically like research. I have to re read the classics because I'm basically saying to myself, okay, I need to read the classics so I know that other people have done. And I, in order to pr improve myself as an author, I want to be able to read those classics and say, okay, I can stand on these people's shoulders and do something uh, equally good or perhaps even better. Um, yeah, that's my philosophy of it. Anyway, have a good day and uh, go read the classics. Bye-bye.